Hey guys, Luna here, and we're back with Hive Swap Friend Sim. And last we left off, we met, we made two new best friends. The uh, gold blood and the gold blood couple in the the clover formation. The I, I think I can't remember if it was spades or clubs that it was in, but I I can't remember if it was not it was not a flesh relationship or if it was fleshed. Um, now we're on to volume seven of business flagrantly legal. Ever since you were a kid back on earth, you always held the deep, you've always ha held the deep close wish that went to one day travel the world. You wanted to see new places, experience exciting new tastes and altitudes and temperatures. Maybe go scuba diving. You never imagined you would actually get the chance. That kind of cool stuff didn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish, it's just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. When you didn't get back when you get back to Earth, well, you don't wanna think about that. Who knows if that will ever happen again? You really you have really chilled out recently. You found your place in the universe, drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. It it's the only way to live. Ooh. I, I like Romilio's Nem Nemequiz design. It's adorable. I got the, I'm gonna like I love that design. Just because I would probably dress like that <laughs> if I if I had clothing like that. Though I don't I, I don't absolutely love the little like off the shoulder thing, but sometimes it just happens with my clothing. Uh He's writing these dames now down so I I can don't have to look it up again later. But I also do like uh Corlia um a mi mix uh, I, I don't know how how the heck do you pronounce that last name? Akima Akimela? I probably horribly but butchering that last name, but I like her design's very interesting because Jade, Jade Bloods are usually the vampire, so it's, it's interesting to see like a brutish, strong looking vampire instead of sort of like the slender, chic design like our previous Jade Blood. But yeah, let's go into Romila's Nem Quest. You've wandered into a part of town that seems to have some culture going on. There are a lot of bright neon lights and you can't read what the signs say, but you, you can see an arcade, a performance space, and what looks like a movie theater. Perhaps a more indie-oriented compared to a, the mall cinemas you've seen before. As you continue wandering, you've come across a trendy-looking building with a place card outside that shows a little cartoon doodle of a fancy waiter holding out trays of snacks. You can't read what the words say, but you recognize the intergalactic signal for free food inside. Come on in. You head inside and it appears to be an art gallery. It must be opening tonight because there are festive decorations up and a little table offering drinks and hors d'oeuvres. There are many art appreciators here and your adrenaline spikes when you realize that most of the trolls milling around are purple bloods. It's, I guess so. Two famous art pieces here. I don't remember the name of this one, but this is the Mona Lisa, the troll Mona Lisa. <laughs> there are many other art. Uh, yeah, I said the line. You're not sure if some paintings and snacks are worth the high chances of being maimed when chaotic violence breaks out, but you're you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury. Someone approaches. You don't look like my other patrons. Are you lost? Or perhaps you're looking to start start a collection. If you're loaded, ignore that the first question. Is for everyone after all, regardless of your blood color. The four purple uh, the four purple black black pupils in her eye glint and sparkle, and you're not sure yet if it's a menacing or friendly sparkle. She grins at you and shows her all your teeth. So what do you think of all the odds? Uh, have any of paintings caught your eye? You look around. You don't know much about art, but you are a nerd, and a lot of paintings here remind you of scenes of popular movies and games back then. Right. 
going to... The artwork is stunning. Perhaps the best I've ever seen. Troll Mona Lisa who? Ha, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, flattery. She puts a hand on her hip and winks at you. You're guessing here that she doesn't actually want you to stop. You're also making the connection that she must be the artist who painted all of these. You sense the opportunity for friendship, so you lay it on thick and gush out about how talented she is. Hmm. I thought uh, you looked at like a dumbass when you walked in, but you have a good taste after all. Let me show you around. You follow Mela through the gallery, swinging by the table with the, fr the free food first. It's pretty good by the standards you come to expect on that area, but what you thought was wine at first glance is actually fe figure. No oh, thanks. You may have noticed some of the themes in my exhibit of work. I don't love clowns, of course, as much as it may seem. That's just uh, what I have for sale here. If you look at my work online, you'll see more of the full range of my art. But for the fancy gallery stuff, Papa Bloods are some of my best customers. These clowns fucking love art. They're rich as fuck and they don't buy anything. They'll buy anything as long as it's violent enough or features of religious themes. You see the kind of destruction and mayhem that purple bulbs are capable of. So you're surprised that she doesn't mind being in a crowded gallery with so many of them. Most other trolls you're interacted with have done their best to steer clear of their clown murdering cult guys. At least when one of those hate romance relationships isn't on the table. Isn't it kind of dangerous to actively court them in your audience? Oh, sure, that can be unpredictable, and keeping them happily requires some smoothing. Occasionally, I have to pretend like I've drunk in the Fago and pull some religious references out of my butt. But it's nothing I can't handle. You make a lot more money that, as an artist when you're not choosy about what you draw. One of my customers is this blue blood moron who's only ever commissioned me to draw low bloods in quadrants with other low bloods. When I got him convinced, I've given him. A dealer is late when he's actually paying five times what I charge anyone else. <laughs> My point is, I think it is for chums, and if you want to get ahead in the world, this world, giving people what they want first. That strikes you as depressing outlook on the creative process, but you're aware by now that idealism on Terria tends to lead to shorter lifespans. And you have to admit, looking around at the crowd in this gallery, that her cynical approach seems to be working. You tell her that she sounds pretty business savvy in addition to be too talented. She winks at you again. Thanks, I know. Because I make bank doing shit like this, I'm able to fund my passion project passionate projects. You really should I really check out my webcomic. But she, before you can find out what her webcomic is about, she knows another show that has been sliding up to you. She approaches, she whips out what looks like a small recording device with a smile. Emil's face goes carefully blank and she crosses her arms over her chest. And how can I help you? Ah, yes. There, hello there, Namquim. I'm with Italian Nightly, and I must say, I it looks like your first ever gallery exhibit has been a smashing six. Journey. Wait, who is this? Oh, did you journal? The journalist here who's telling you and insinuous words don't seem threatening to you, but you're picking up on some tense vibes from Emil, who's. Air ribbon sways forward in front of her face aggressively. And of course, it's success. I would never expect it out otherwise. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, but some in the art world would have expressed surprise at the timing of this. Some have called it bold, considering that you're currently in the middle of a plagiarism controversy. Would you care to comment on the case against you by trying to move you? Instead of being caught off guard by the question sprung on her, Amelia relaxes and laughs. What's oh, that? <laughs> As they have any idea of real evidence that I'm viola violating their precious intellectual property. All the characters I draw and profit from are entirely original. The trite the media and their leg legislature are just mad about it because the whole internet knows that my storylines are better than the source material. Oops. I mean, better than the unrelated creative works that my comics happen to bear superficial resemblance to you. Feel free to call me a mess. The reporter takes a quote and scuttles away. Mel seems unbothered, but you can't help but feel concerned for her. Copyright infringement is a serious business. Is a new friend in legal hot water? Nah, 
my terrier barely has any copyright protection, so speak up, speak up. It's just that that, that little pest gr or jork. Um, uh, no, uh, gore, jack. Cerulean uh, cer cer blood, I believe. Cer Trying to stir up shit as you, it's just a little pesky trick trying to stir up shit as usual. The company behind his Lucy wouldn't even care if he hadn't gotten involved. It's no big deal, huh? nothing I can't handle. When you get back to following her around the gallery, keeping up your distance whenever a purple bullet comes up to compliment her on her work, you can tell that, that despite her confident attitude, Amelia is still thinking about that journalist. She taps her foot in front of the paintings whenever there's a lull in conversation, throwing glances at the door that the journal just left through. You know, it's not like Abdaria has a free press or a credible newspaper. That reporter is probably hired by someone with a grudge to dig up. I don't think it was Gorgia though. Actually, it's too obvious. Eh? I'm amateurish. No, this stinks of my competitor. Eh? Competition. Eh? The artistic establishment that I think is all I can do is fan art. Eh? And it shouldn't be taken seriously as an art. The paintings are in are in the museum across the street, and they hate that I've managed to put up my own exhibit. The stuck-up pre pretentious ball scrubs have been trying to sabotage me for so long. As she turns to you, her hands balled up and fists and the X in her eye flashing with passion. I've been waiting for the opportunity to strike. One is going to accuse me of being a theft and a hacker anyway. I might as well steal from them for real. But security is tight and I haven't had an accomplice until now. What do you say I want to help me pull up a risky art heist? This is interesting, there's three choices. I have to remember this. Does one last round in her exhibit, saying goodbye to her patrons and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies, as you head out the door and the end onto the street. The museum she wants to rob is at the end of the block, in a much bigger fancy building than the one you just walked out of. All of the lights are inside, and it doesn't have any signs advertising, advertising current exhibits. We, what can we do in this one of two ways? Follow that journalist and steal the key, steal the keys that she has them, or break in without them. Another choice. I would like to steal the keys. You would much rather walk down through an unlocked door than try and bust it down. The reporter is still in sight, turning a corner down the streets. You try and imi imitate Ramil's casual yet confident way of walking, like she could blend in anywhere and pull off anything. But despite your efforts not to attract suspicion, you keep getting looks. Not being the same species as everyone around, you tend to make you stand out. Shit, this could be a problem. Pull out a sky for you, hang on. You watch as she starts pulling these things from her bag. She seems to have all sort of, sorts of things in there. From brushes to blobs of clay to paint. And you think she might be putting together some fake coins for you from scratch real quick? But before she can finish, you realize that one of the purple bloods about to walk into the of galleries is staring at you. It looks vaguely familiar and you realize a little too late where you met him before when he starts walking towards you. Ooh. Remember you? You broke into my apartments. It's the same troll that you and Papa escaped from. You back away as he advances. He leaves a grin on his face. Real glances from him to you and back to him again. Fuck! Okay. Looks like I'm not gonna have accomplished after all. Sorry, pal. Hoists her bag over her shoulder and shrugs her hands and a hey, what can you do, Jester? Then she's big purple blood paying her no mind as she absconds. You want to feel betrayed, but it's hard to blame her considering how scary this guy is. In your heart, you know that you're dead already, but you're not going to accept your fate without attempting to prevent it. You make a mad dash to escape, sprinting toward a skinnier alley and thinking that maybe you can scamper up a fire escape or something. Unfortunately, your attacker's size doesn't seem to slow him down, and you can hear his heavy footfalls right behind you. He laughs, and a 
somehow sounds dopey and dumb, but completely terrifying at the same time. Hong Kong. <laughs> you make it to, to an, the alley, but you're, you fucked up because it's a dead end and you don't see anything. You could use a clan mark to high enough ground. You see some hopelessness sinking down to your toes. Your scrappy alien tenure on this bizarre new planet is about to come to a messy end. The purple blood swings his massive club lazily in one hand as he approaches you, not bothering to run, run anymore. You drop into a frightening fighting crouch, trying to think uh, back to your third grade karate lessons for any moves that might be useful, but before he can crush your skull in, you see a flash of movement behind him. He staggers, dropping the club as something hits him from behind. As much as I appreciate inspiring my fans, I'm gonna have to ask you not to interrupt my arts. Uh, it's a literary lesson. No littering. Mamiya springs off the troll's back and after clawing him and rolls off to, to the side, avoiding his swinging fist. She grabs for his club, which is almost as lo long as she is tall, but before she can use it, 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 it his next blow catches her below the ribcage, sending her flying across the alley into the brick wall. She's on her feet again, but you can tell she's injured, and now she doesn't have the element of surprise on her side. The purple blood turns his back on you as he closes in on her meal, laughing again. You can't let him kill her, not when she's back for you, but you have no idea how you can help her. Your eyes land on Romeo's back, tossed to the side in the melee, and in desperation you grab a loose paintbrush and roll out of it. You dive forward with a battle cry and stab the end of the paintbrush deep into the high blood's calf. Violet blood squirts you in the face. He yells and you manage to roll away just in time to avoid getting smacked. The slight stab wound hasn't slowed him down much, but it's given Ramil a chance to dive out of his range while he's still trying to grab you as she gets a hold of his club again. Oh, that's a big fancy club. She's stronger than she looks, strong enough to get a good wind up with that thing. And when he turns toward her, he she brings it down hard onto its skull. It takes, it takes a few good, uh, more good smashes before the troll finally stops groaning and twitching. Emil breathes heavily, wiping his blood splatters off her forehead. She looks up, look meeting your eyes. We are absolutely positive that this is the most dramatic way you have ever been rescued, and you can't believe she came back and risked your life for you. Not to mention it, I need a complex, right? He drops the club and staggers over to you. Pausing to spit out cerulean blood, so yeah, cerulean. <laughs> you remember that she took some damage in her you to support her, offering her your weak human arm to lean on. Is she going to be okay? I'd be fine. Cer Ceruleans are tough to call, even for a wannabe subjugulator. She tilts her head, looking down at the way her per her blood swirls the larger qualities of purple blood pooling on the asphalt. Huh. It's not actually as bad as an art. Just you know, the colors and textures work well together. Maybe that blue blood kit from Chitter is on with something. Anyways, thank you. Thanks for having my back on with that. Look at thinking. Make an okay team. I've never killed anyone before, but that's kind of what we'll then it is. You're not sure that you would choose those exact words, but you're pretty relieved right now. You might have bloodthirsty glint in your eyes that. Neil does, but maybe you can interpret the adrenaline shake as a furic overload or something. Oh yeah, me too. I can see why people get into this killing business. If I wasn't such a great artist, I would consider searching careers. Oh, excuse me. But sometimes, when you're good at too many things, you have to pick one and stick to it, so no professional assassination for me. I'm so determined to wrap this shit out to my competitors, though. And you, now that we killed someone together, it just makes sense for us to say partners in crime, right? Your heart leaves at the implication that sh she wants to stick together. You truly do not mind breaking every law in the books if it means she'll be your friends. Nice. You probably don't need to be around breaking every law. I just want to steal less of my then maybe we can reschedule the heights for another day. This neighborhood will be crawling with drones as soon as they recognize a high blood is killed. You feel bad that this troll attempting to slaughter you is ruined and the meal's gallery opening. Oh yeah, 
kidding me? Are you kidding? My customer base loves this kind of shit. My ads will get even more brand and rep reputation when the word gets out that someone died at my guy. Free gallery show? That's a metal as fuck. You limp out of the alley, supporting a meal with your arm around your wa her waist. She directs you to the back entrance of her galley where, galley, where the two of you can clean off the blood and hide until the drones and the crowds are gone. And if, if you don't mind, you can lie low at my place for a few days while you plan the seist. I might as well get some work done while we wait and scheme. That fight, that fight was pretty inspiring. What are you? My compass, so how would you feel about also being my minions? Mm, that's, that's adorable. That's a good ending. So let's bust down the door. I sounds pretty risky enough without spending extra time trying to pickpocket some keys. You suggest that this crime is going to happen tonight. It should happen now. No time like the presents. Go the blend. Let's play like into the museum. You school casually across the street to the museum on the corner. Kind of look your unusual appearance draws pass from passerby. Neil takes some fabric from her bags and wraps around her head. There. Now people will probably just assume that you have horns. You're just probably embarrassed by them being tiny or malformed. Step into that alcove, shielding the museum back door, and wait for me. I'm gonna draw the. I'm gonna circle the block at first, just so you seem less suspicious. As you wait for me to meal by the door, the reality of this caper settles in. You would have been excited for this, the heist at first, because. I'm gonna be excited by the opportunity to sneak around, steal some right and stick it to the man. Probably while a, while a snazzy soundtrack played. But now you realize that in a heist, movies there always have blueprints for the place they're going to rob. You have no blueprints, and it seems like a dire sign. Before you can get too swept up in your worries, Emile returns. Does she have any idea how to get into this place? Because the door looks pretty unbusted downable to you. Yeah, I got some tricks up my sleeve. I've never done this before, but it'll probably, probably work. She roots through her bag until she comes out with several paintbrushes of various sizes, then crouches down and uses the skinniest one as a lockpick. It doesn't work, but then she selects a different paintbrush with a dip, different bristles and uses some of the brushes bunched together, and the lock clicks open. Ah, I'm glad at this, but I could be an incredible thief if I had it, decided to do that instead of art. Do you ever take the time to sit back and acknowledge how great you are at everything you do and how much you trust yourself to never fuck it up when it counts? You hope that the question is rhetorical because your honest answer is no. Is that no? You don't have a whole lot of experience of acknowledging how great you are at everything you attempt. Your mental accomplishments lately have mostly been the opposite of that. Maybe it wasn't rhetorical because Mule stays crouched like that for a second, looking at you like she wants an answer. When you eventually come up with an awkward shrug, she stands up and puts away her makeshift lockpick, dusting off her hands and opening the door. I guess not everyone can be as good to my confidence level. Anyway, yeah, let's go. You follow her inside. Much to your delight, you see that this museum has an infrared laser beam alarm system. It looks so cool, just like in the movies, and you're back to being excited. Emil seems into it too, bouncing on the balls of her feet next to you. Interesting, very interesting. One of us is going to have to get through the beams to dismantle the alarm. The box to get, the box it to do is across the room there. See, but those lasers are so close together. <laughs> Emil isn't tall for a troll, but she might be. But she might be too tall to maneuver through these beams. Even if she bends over, she's going to, it's going to be tricky for her to squirm through them all without losing her balance and tripping the alarm. But the trolls that designed this alarm system didn't have your hornless put in mind when they thought of potential intruders. You stoop over a bit to see if you fit, and sure enough, yes, you should be able to shimmy your way through these beams with mid minimal contortion. Fuck yeah! I knew I was right to, to bring an accomplice. Glad to thinking me. I'm glad to high school zoo if you pull this off. You recall what she said about confidence and trusting yourself not to fuck things up, and you assure her that you can. Place the laser beams with your self doubt shelved all the way down, and where it hopefully you won't screw anything up. And won't screw anything up for you. You take a deep breath and crouch down carefully, so carefully, inch your way forward between the wires. 
It's the slowest you've ever crossed a room in your life, and there are a couple moments when you teeter and almost lose your balance. You can hear Ramil hissing through your teeth behind you at tense moments, moments but not looking back. And then you've done it! You reach the boxes to disable the alarm system, and you have no idea how they're going to do that. All the buttons are labeled in an alien outfit. Oh, that's right. I can't forget. And through me. Press the one that looks like a uh, meat hooker but with angry eyes. Then press the one that looks like a meat hooker but with it, but it's got pearl based claws. That should do it. That sounds bonkers to you, but you look at, back at the, the button. You look back at the buttons. And her descriptions of the letters are actually spot on. You press the angry eyes and the cat claws, and the whole alarm system makes a soft shuddering noise and flicks it and shuts off. You're a thrill. You did great. Who knew doing something right could give you such a rush? This is just uh, like the part of the heist where the heroes had to sweat for a minute but then defeated the unforeseen wrench in their plan. You aren't certain that there couldn't possibly be any larger wrenches in the plan still to come. Ramil comes across the room to join you, giving you an appraising look with her hands on her hips. Not bad, thanks for coming through for me like that. Now let's get to what we came here for. There is one work in particular that I'm here to get. Excuse me. You follow through the different galleries, passing through sculpture rooms and oil paintings, until you reach a display of pieces that look inspired by pop culture. The paintings and prints in here remind you a lot of Ramil's exhibits, and when you look at her, you can see that she's rigid, her eyes flashing a passionate blue tint to her cheeks. I can't believe they call me as the hacker. Such a bullshit. Whatever, it's a color. It doesn't actually bother me. I just need to send the message that they don't want to fuck with me. Paying right over here is the direct rip off of one of my early works, back when I was an even naive enough to put my app up for free without realizing you could just be copied and someone else would get all the credit and the profits. Well, I learned my lesson. I'll take this so they can't sell it. Rip off, rip, rip off the rip off. Make some even something even better and turn it over to a truckload of cash. I figured it was that one since it was so prominent in the back frame. She grabs the painting and just when the two of you are ready to high stroll out, there you hear voices at the back door. What sounds like a team of security guards coming in. They must have arrived to investigate the lime system shutting down. You're ready to embrace your panic, but you stop hyperventilating when you feel Mio's voice, vice like claw grip on your arm. Don't freak out, follow my lead, and you can still get out of this. You assume that this whole place is off now that the security has shown up, but to your surprise, Ramil doesn't put the stolen painting back on the wall. She gives you your arm one last reassuring squeeze before shunning out of the room with her head held high, moising with no hurry to the front door. You follow her nonchalant lead as best you can. When one of the security guards stop her, Ramil gives him a condescending, slightly confused look. Uh, what are you even doing? Told me she informed all of the staff that I would be swinging by to dead. Let us up. Did you miss the memo? <clears throat> Give me a break. I'm sure it must be easy to miss things, right? Because as a security guard, you probably get so much important uh, it comes bonding every single day. Her four people somewhere give her steering eye roll extra sarcastic force. She yawns and her free hand, not holding the painting, flicks some non existent dirt, dirt off her shoulder. The security troll, a burgundy blood, judging, judging from the sign on his cop hat, looks uncertain and embarrassed. Hostilized. Since you're apparently too busy to do your job right, I'll catch you up to speed. I'm the artist behind this piece, and I've got a wealthy patron interested in commissioning something similar. I'm taking this as a reference in order to negotiate a better deal. There's absolutely no way these guys will buy your story. The two of you look so guilty, and you still have her yellow sash wrapped around your head, probably looking like an idiot with a head injury. But Mila is staring down this guard like it hasn't occurred to her that she might be questioned. you never seen someone double down so hard on a story that's su such a transport and ignorant bullshit. If you want to waste more of my time and yours by calling your supervisor superior to verify, go ahead. You might not be thrilled that this mix-up happens, because you can't keep up with your emails. Like, 
The security troll is already wavering, and at the mention of his emails and printers, his co-workers behind him shuffle around muttering to each other. He steps back, his horns lowered in embarrassment, and waves you in revealed mumbled apology. You can't believe this is happening, but the two of you swag out of the streets through the front door, legitimate as anything. You don't stop until you've turned the corner to the next block, and Emil leans against a wall and laughs, holding her painting happily to her chest. Ah, suckers! It's good to get away with things, doesn't it? That's feel good, you suppose. Mostly you think you're so reeling. How did she come with a story like that on the fly? How did she guess correctly that the security guard wasn't the hyper-organized, inbox zero kind of guy who never believed that he could have missed a message? Emil gives you an odd look and reaches forward to unwind the sash from around your head and stuff it into her bag. I just wonder, the man. You overthink of things. My guesses are usually right there because I'm a clue to genius, but it goes after it. But if, if going after it for emails hadn't worked, meh. I guess we would have been arrested and then I'll talk to my way out of that eventually too. Wow. I find it so hard to believe that she goes through life so easily with that kind of unshakable belief that she can improvise through anything. Doesn't she worry that I'll catch up to her someday? Want the long answer? It's this. Nope. I super don't. And if you still don't get it, I don't know if it's the kind of thing you can really learn. She picks up the painting again, looking down at the street and away from you. But that was a successful race. Now that I've ruined the competition, I feel inspired. I'm gonna take this off. With a sinking feeling, a feeling, you realize that she's getting ready to depart and this friendship might be slipping through your fingers. Sorry, kid. You seem like you're not totally useless, Lise, but I'm not one for long term artistic collaboration. It's only easy to talk your way out of tight spots, tight spots when you're on your own. Peace. Watch her go. Your shoulders sagging with disappointment. You guys stole from a museum together, escaped together, bamboos with the cops together. You should have bonded over your shared transgressions and culpability. Every crime movie you've ever seen taught you that high spring close together, but cultural differences? Game over. <laughs> so many choices. So let's do heck yes. Emil does one last round in your exhibits and I'm just gonna uh, saying goodbye to your patients and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies, and you head the door into the street. The museum she wants to rob is at the end, much fancier. It doesn't. Uh, let's save since I already did these. Let's, um, let's do the keys. And this is already the same. Okay, so it's just a false choice. I'm just gonna see if this is a false choice. Yeah, so if, yeah, there's that and bust down the door. So yeah, yeah. So that's just a false choice. Seems kind of derivative. <laughs> you clearly know know nothing about art, uh, pleb. If you don't like it, there's. There's the door. Make a room for someone with money to burn and a bit of taste. And go away. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. And may the stars forever guide your path, forever it might lead you into the future. Bye-bye.